today. Last story of the first half is going to be read to you by Richard De Silva. Richard studied it at uh, Kingston University, earning a degree in creative writing and a master's degree in film, while also lecturing in script writing. His career has taken him to unexpected places, including BBC headquarters, a windowless office at Western, Westminster Cathedral, and a military base in Saudi Arabia. What were you doing there, Richard? <laughs> he is currently a managing editor at a digital company in London. His stories have appeared in The River and Ripple Literary Anthology. Reading his highly commended story, Venison, please welcome Richard De Silva. And is it true that on the afternoon in question, Poirier was punctuated with gasps from the courthouse? He hoped as much. No one expected the prosecution to be so blunt in what had, until that moment, been a trial managed with the utmost delicacy and poise. The man in the dock took a moment to consider his response as though trying to recall the afternoon in question. Yep. And yet, Mr. Banks, your defence strikes me as bizarre. You are pleading not guilty to these most abhorrent of charges, and yet your statement clearly details the exact brutal machinations of your crimes, crimes of murder, and of, even the word itself was hard to swallow, and of cannibalism. A hum of nausea rippled through the room. Mercifully, the jurors had not been required to view the forensic photographs, but everyone, jury public included, knew the dark realities of the case, and to be reminded of them, had a way of conjuring all the distressing images they would ever need. That's incorrect, sir, Francis Banks countered. My statement details only how I killed her and ate her. Then you do admit to her murder. I've never murdered anyone in my life. There was a stunned silence. Jasper Farrington QC stared long and hard at the accused, the small, reedy figure in a grey suit. He was a cucumber sandwich of a man, as ordinary as rain. <laughs> and yet, he was the subject of the most heinous crime in the nation's living memory. The fact that such an uncharismatic oaf had chosen to represent himself had been sweet dessert for the tabloid. They had found her on the grill. Most of her, that is. The, the rest in Ziploc bags in the freezer, tucked behind the potato waffles. <laughs> Jasper could remember the day he was presented with the case in horrifying detail. The testimonies from weeping police officers, the white-faced witnesses afraid to speak, the drooling journos setting up camp outside the farmhouse, the accounts of finding Gillian Wexler's shoulders marinated in Korean pear juice and being slowly smoked over cedarwood. For the man to now claim he was innocent of the charge was utter hootow. Do you intend to change your plea to manslaughter, Mr. Banks? Jasper said. Why on earth would I? I'm not guilty of that either. And I suppose you're not guilty of cannibalism, even though you were discovered by the local constabulary to have been feasting on Miss Wexler's remains. A cry was heard in the gallery. Someone in the Wexler family began to sob. Of course I'm not accountable. The very idea of it disgusts me. He made an expression of disgust. I see, Jasper said, nodding perfunctorily and squaring the paperwork in front of him. I understand now. This is some attempt to claim diminished responsibility. Do you really expect us to believe that you were not in control of your actions that day, however cruel and detached they may have been? I was perfectly in control. In fact, I took great care with it all. Did I not make that clear in my statement? Murder is no joke, Mr. Banks. I wouldn't know, sir. I've never murdered anyone. Then what you did to that young woman, those monstrous, ruthless atrocities, she was not a young woman, sir. Jasper blinked. Beg your pardon? I said she was not a young woman, sir. If she had been, I would not have killed her. Jasper turned his gaze to the judge, who seemed just as confused. Mr. Banks, the judge said in a barrel-aged rumble, peering down at the stand from behind his oval reading specs. <coughs> Are you attempting to subvert my court? No, Your Honour. Then I advise you to stop being facetious and answer the question. But I believe Mr. Farrington is mistaken to the facts of the case, and that makes his questions very difficult to answer. Then Mr. Banks, Jasper said, letting the condescension bubble at his lips, be kind enough to enlighten the court on these facts of which you have such a clearer understanding than the rest of us. Banks shrugged. Miss Wexler was not a woman, young, old, or otherwise. She was not a human being. What? <laughs> she was a deer, a fallow deer, to be precise, Dharma Dharma of the family Sabidae, Possibly one of the long-haired variety, though it's unusual to find them anywhere outside of Shropshire, so I can't be sure. Then again, I doubt she could either. 
<laughs> I, I object, Your Honour. The accused is obviously trying to feign mental incapacity in an attempt to derail this trial. But it's the truth, sir. Banks said, straightening his seat, she said so herself. The judge looked down again at the accused, his face calcified in thought. Then he waved a hand. I'm, I'm curious as to where this is going. Jasper let out an audible sigh of disbelief. That's your defence? That she told you she was a deer, so you felt you had to kill her? She didn't tell me anything, not me specifically, but I knew she was a deer, a lot of people knew. And that enraged you? Of course not. I don't know why it would. Fact is, I found it to be rather sweet. Deer are such graceful, beautiful creatures. But then I remembered that I enjoy deer hunting, enjoy it very much, so it only makes sense that I kill her. Another murmur bristled about the court until the judge ordered the rabble to zip it. Mr. Banks, Jasper, had been caught with a straight jab down the pipe, and he knew he needed to get back on the front foot. I don't... This is, this is not a defence. You're looking at life in prison. It is a defence, in as far as I'm having to defend myself, despite the fact that I can't legally be tried for murder when there is no victim. Miss Wexler is the victim. But Miss Wexler can't be a victim on account of her being a deer. <laughs> Only people can be victims of murder or manslaughter. Miss Wexler is not people. Where on earth is this nonsense coming from? I'd be very careful of calling it nonsense, sir. That can be very offensive to those who identify themselves as deer or of whatever animal, object or piece of furniture they've chosen as their spiritual self. It would most certainly have been very offensive to Miss Wexler, although she wouldn't have had any right to complain about being offended on account of being a deer. <laughs> deer are not capable of being defamed, I don't think. Your Honour? The judge shook his head. They are, they are not. <laughs> Miss, Miss Wexler was not a deer, Jasper snapped, beginning to feel like this man was trying to play him the fool. She most certainly was. She identified entirely as a deer. She was awakened to this fact some years ago. It's all detailed in her blog, the one entitled My So-Called Glade. When she awoke, she began to have an insatiable urge to chew grass and romp in woodlands. She took to painting herself with sandy golden brown with white dots and wearing a tail made of cotton wool. It's all there, recorded online, not my words, hers. So you were stalking her online before you killed her? Absolutely. One tends to stalk deer before killing her. It's part of the process. Otherwise, it's all a bit pointless. Pointless? There's a point to deer stalking, an important point. It's a very natural and primordial state in which to exist. Just one man's iron wits against those of the life untamed beast. I like it very much. And once you kill them, you eat all you can, sell the rest to the local butcher if he has need, and hang the antlers as a trophy. Miss Wexler had no antlers. That is irrefutable. Jasper was seething now, offended more by the circus this man was building around them than the disrespect he was showing to the deceased. She did, on account of her being a deer. Invisible ones, she said. So I mounted them on an invisible plaque and hung the plaque on an invisible wall. It seemed the most appropriate thing to do. Aha! Jasper cried, seeing an opening. A contradiction. Female deer don't have antlers. That's a rather archaic attitude, isn't it? <laughs> Touching aside his face. I thought we'd long moved on from gender stereotyping. Jasper flipped through the dockets on his desk. He noticed that his hands were trembling ever so slightly. Never in his life had he faced a killer as cold and as cracked as Francis Banks. But the man was hanging himself with his own rope. Let him talk, Jasper thought. Give him more opportunity to show the jury what kind of coot they were really dealing with. Jasper's throat was so dry, it almost hurts. He scrambled for something else to say. Your statement says you lured her to your property. Well, I got in touch with her after reading her blog for a while, mentioned I owned a lot of land up north, and that she could romp and chew and spring about and whatever else deer do as much as she wished. She liked that idea almost as much as I like deer hunting, which I like very much. <laughs> you presumably didn't tell her it was a trap. I didn't mention I was going to kill her and eat her, that's what you mean. She would probably not have turned up if she'd known that. It's just that you can't hunt deer on someone else's land without a license and all the correct permits. On my own land, with my license, I have every right to hunt deer, and I like hunting deer so very much, I believe I mentioned that. <laughs> Never in my life, just to rub his eyes, what makes you think the court will be any more lenient to you to make such outlandish claims? Because they are not my claims, sir. Like I said, Miss Wexler identified as a deer. That was her right. And everyone knows that identity these days lies solely on one's personal opinion of themselves. This is the 21st century, after all. Are we so antiquated that we see each other only in some normative, binary manner? What bigots we would be to impose a socially constructed identity on others when each of us is so unique and complex? So to deny that she was a deer is to deny her, and everyone else in this country, the freedom to choose who they are, biology be damned. You really believe that? My God, man, Miss Wexler believed that. 
Those were her very words written on her blog. She expe expressed a clear desire that she no longer be considered a human being, but a deer, on account of her being a deer. All the evidence is right there. Mr. Banks, I could say I'm a helicopter and that wouldn't make me a helicopter. It might, if you said it enough. <laughs> if you put some rotor blades on your head and maybe went about making that f -f 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 sound with your mouth. <laughs> It would be difficult to get right, but I'm sure you could do it if you tried, but you wouldn't do that, of course, that would be silly. Because I'm not a helicopter. No, because you would be in numerous violations of civil aviation regulations. <laughs> For one, you'd struggle to reach the required altitude, and good luck trying to meet enough clearance from people and obstacles in a built-up area. The whole matter would be preposterous. I'm surprised you're even considering it. I'm not considering it! <laughs> Your Honour, Doug said, addressing the bench, can we please get back to the matter at hand? I don't want to be here all day. Nor do I, the judge said. Mr. Farrington, get back on point. <laughs> Me? He's the one trying to take us off track. <laughs> now, Mr. Farrington. But this is twaddle, Your Honour. The words of a mount bank. People can't just make up which rights they have or don't have. True, Bank said. But Miss Wexler was not people. She was a deer. A fallow deer, to be exact, <laughs> with white spots and a cotton tail. <laughs> Miss Wexler was not a bloody deer, you delusional idiot. The courtroom was becoming a hotbox. Mr. Farrington, the judge snapped, personal attacks will not be tolerated in my court. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honour, but are you saying Miss Wexler was delusional, Banks said? From what you said, she may well have been, but how dare you, sir? People have fought long and hard for identity rights in this country. You call that delusional? Shame on you. No, I, I was calling, and I say to the jury, if you believe in that kind of oppressive viewpoint, then shame on you too. Not only is it wrong to believe that, it's also illegal to not recognise it. Miss Wexler was a graceful and beautiful dear. She has the right to be remembered for those for, for who she was, not by what this lawyer in silk shoes tells me who she was. Don't let her memory be overshadowed by hateful oppression, because that's what this case is really about. When you enter that deliberation room, I urge you, don't let hate win. Choose love. Choose <laughs> <laughs> love. There was a national uproar when the jury decided a majority verdict of acquittal, but for many, a new and exciting precedent had been set. And so began the Great Hunt, a period of several hot summer weeks in which 73 self-declared woodland creatures from deer to rabbit, and even one case of a stoat on the Isle of Man, were shot dead on a legal permit. <laughs> Many were grilled and eaten, their invisible trophies mounted on invisible walls throughout the land. Not that it was anarchy, those that identified with a protected species and offered no license of ownership were rounded up by the RSPCA in a humane manner and rewound in zoos or nature reserves. <laughs> Francis Banks remained out of the spotlight as best he could. He went on to release an unpopular cookbook, but subsequently identified himself as a successful author and saw his work rocket into the New York Times bestseller list. He died after a great battle with leukemia the following winter. Jasper Farrington stood down from his position as a Crown Prosecution lawyer, immediately identified himself as a 70-year-old, drew his pension and retired to Southampton. <laughs> Gillian Wexler was no longer mourned on account of her being a deer. Thank <laughs> you.